Brides who buy dresses that don't fit. <laughs> this is a continual problem. I'm sure you've ran across it a hundred times. Why do brides, why are they attracted to the dresses that do not fit? I have a perspective on both sides of this. I'm a seamstress for many, many years doing bridal. And, um, and then in the midst of that, I actually owned a bridal shop and was on the end of selling dresses. And it just seemed like if I had plus size dresses, the plus size girls really fell in love with the, uh, the small sizes, the petite sizes. And when I had the petite sizes for those, uh, those girls always fell in love with the plus size dresses. And those ones were always the ones that didn't have time to order the dress in their size. <laughs> so, um, I don't know what it is. Uh, same with, we have a group here, the LDS community, they have to have uh, sleeves. If I went out and purchased a uh, samples and gowns that they could buy off the rack that were beautifully, they looked just like the ones without sleeves, just with sleeves. They didn't want those and they hardly bought those until I put them on like a 75% off clearance. They wanted the strapless ones and they wanted me to rebuild <laughs> sleeves or build sleeves onto the strapless gowns. And yet, don't get me going down this tangent, <laughs> but it is amazing. This particular bride, um, she had just gotten a dress and it's just a little too small. So uh, it's not that it was a major thing. She could have exchanged it for a bigger size, um, but then we probably would have been taking it in in the bust anyway. Um, so we're just putting in a lace up and I thought I'd take you along on the journey with me uh, to put it in this lace up. <laughs> okay, here we go. This first step I actually do on my bride. I'm just showing you an example of measuring at different parts to get the distance of the dress closing. And here um, I'm doing an example of how I would write that up in her appointment, um, making a diagram. I then will write all of my measurements that I'm recording onto this section here. So here I measure down one side to how far uh, I need to do the lace-ups where it's closing and I see from the top down is six inches before the zipper will close. And then I'll measure across that top section and here in particular um, I'm just writing that it's six inches. Um, then I'll measure at other points coming down the um, lace up. So here at three inches down, it's four and a half inches. Then I will also measure how far that zipper is going to zip up where I'm going to want the zipper to stop. And here it is about seven inches.
you will not have the perfect V shape. So here I am just expanding that into more of a V uh, so that once it's laced up on her, it uh, has a more appealing look. Okay, now it's time to make yourself some loops uh, for your lace-up. And I like to make a lace-up or a loop casing. I don't even know what to officially call it. Um, but early on in my uh, bridal alteration career, I was trying to put these loops directly on the wedding gown. And the problem with that was is that I was wrestling a very large wedding gown all while trying to perfect these loops and get them perfectly spaced. And um, it was just a nightmare. I did that actually for the first couple of years that I did bridal alterations. And then I came up with this idea of making the loops completely separate uh, and then inserting them. Now, the funny thing is, years and years down the road, I found that a lot of other uh, seamstresses were doing the same thing, and I had never been taught it. So I just think that us seamstresses are amazing and uh, that sometimes we can come up with some of the same ideas, and sometimes we're inspired by other seamstresses. Um, but I just think it's neat that I had come up with this idea and then found out many other seamstresses had done it as well. Um, First of all, before I talk about the casing or other ways to do it, um, let's go ahead and make some loops. And by the way, uh, you might hear a little uh, woodpecker. Our woodpecker has arrived uh, because spring is here. And so he's busy uh, working on our telephone poles out there. So you will hear him. <laughs> Did you hear that? I don't know if you can hear it on there but I just wanted you to know what that sound was. So your next step is uh, that you need to make these little loops here um, that will be put in as part of that. Um, how I do that is I take a strip of fabric from whatever color you want. Um, now this is one way I make it, but let me show you really quickly before we get into that the cheater way that I've done it through the years. If your gown, let me see, if your gown has uh, spaghetti straps, I have an entire box. Well, actually, since I owned a bridal shop, um, I have all of the lace or the little spaghetti straps from all of my 16 years of sample gowns. So I even have all the colors. I have white, I have ivory. This particular box is uh, my ivory. And so often I can actually find a spaghetti strap that was made to go with uh, the exact dress. Um, and so I cheat and I end up using um, some of my little things that's a cheater way. So if you're working with a prom dress and it has a pack of spaghetti straps with it, you can actually steal the spaghetti straps to use for your lace-ups if there's enough, if it's not too long of a lace-up. So that's a cheater way. But then you run across times when your fabric just doesn't match. Um, you, can't, you can't find you know loops or spaghetti straps to match, so you have to make it out of matching fabric. And that's where you'll take a strip. I believe this is, what is it? It's about an inch. I've cut it about an inch uh, wide and then however long, um, not too long because it's hard to turn them. And then you will be sewing it as tiny as you can. I usually can get about uh, a quarter of an inch the width of my um, presser foot. Um, but let me do that and I'll be right back. Let me sew that. Okay. Can you see how uh, tight I'm trying to get that? 
I am actually putting this little edge right at the edge of my presser foot. If you can get smaller than that, even better, um, but practice with it because you may not be able to turn it if you get it smaller than that. And every fabric is a little different. Some fabric slips nice and turns really easy and other fabric does not. Okay, so I've got that done at a quarter of an inch. Um, and then I usually trim away my excess seam allowance. Now, be super careful if you have fabric that frays really easy because you don't want uh, your loops to fray and then this pull away from, um, from, you know, and then not be strong. If that's the, you may wanna test these when you turn them and, and see if, you know, they don't just fray and pull apart. Okay, then the next step is to turn it inside out and this is probably the hardest part. Um, I have a couple different tools. Um, I actually have a little turning kit that I got online. Um, let me see if I can show you. I got it so long ago that I don't know if they even sell it anymore. And tell me in the comments what you guys use to turn it. Maybe you have um, some information on an even better set. This particular one, you would insert into, see, I don't usually use this. This is even too, almost too small. So I end up using this kit more for turning the, the actual laces. And I actually just use this tool right here, which um, I got just at my local fabric store. And I just put it inside my loop. This is why you don't want it too long. Um, and then here at the end, I don't know if you could see it. There's a hook. So I'm going to hook that and try to get it Getting started is the hardest part. Doing this on camera is even harder because <laughs> usually I'm doing this by myself. And it takes a couple tries to get that to turn, do not panic. And then the hardest part is to not let it go. I don't know why it is licking my fingers seems to help anyways. And you wanna practice this because this is something you gotta really practice at because if you move that hook wrong in there, it will come undone. And then you're, you've got a world of mess because your loop is stuck inside. So once you can get it through, see how I pulled it through to the other side? Then you can unhook it and then you finish it. Let me finish that for you. Okay, that particular one was harder than it was. And then I actually will usually press it if I need to or anything like that. Actually, you don't even need to press them because they're better. Here's one I did out of more of a woven fabric. And the problem with that one was is that it was causing it to fray. So I needed to double stitch it a bunch um, and secure it. But once you have that, uh, then I actually cut it into little sections here and I'll show you that. They're usually about two and a half, two and a half to three inches. Um, and I'll show you that as we do the rest of this casing. Let me grab those. So then to make the casing, 
you're gonna need a piece of fabric here. And I need um, six inches. So I actually have made this eight inches long. I tend to make things a little bit bigger than I need. Um, and then this particular one is three inches wide. So three inches wide, couple inches longer than I need. Um, so it's six inches. So I'm gonna come in and as you can see, I gave myself a seam allowance of a half an inch. I just came up a half an inch right here and drew a line with my disappearing pin. And that's my baseline where I'm gonna be sewing. Then I find my six inches that I need to here. And I'm gonna want a loop here and a loop here. Um, and then for this particular one, I actually do it every inch. And I actually will create a little bit longer strips here because I'm going to be sewing those loops like so. Then I like to do about a half an inch. Um, those end up to be a little bit too wide for the loops. Um, so you can probably back it up to a quarter of an inch and maybe going right above that. And I will go through and let me see. And then I create a dotted line, and this is basically where my loops are gonna kind of loop up and over. Now on this one, I actually did a half an inch. Um, so it would be a little bit higher than this. So I'm gonna just show you on this. So then you're gonna take your loops, and I know I need, for each side, I need six. And I need there to be long, you want it long enough that it's not right by the edge because you want it to be, um, have a strong connection and you're going, so it doesn't fray up to there. You want strong loops. Brides are gonna be pulling on this. So you want those to be nice and strong. So figure I need about that much. Usually it's about two and a half. Um, I'm just gonna cut them three inches each. This is for sample purposes. <laughs> I do a little bit better job when I'm actually doing it for the bride. Um, so then I'm gonna come along and I'm going to sew in each of my strips um, on each of the inch marks. Except for this last mark here. And I'm usually, uh, this is a different loop. I'm just trying to throw this together to kind of show you how to put them together. So I'm gonna right now sew those all on straight, um, all but the last loop. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but I've got my lines here. I've got my dotted line here. Um, I'm going to sew on the straight line that I did for the seam allowance and I'm going to put each of the loops there. I like to put the seam 
coming towards me. So when I fold it in, it ends up to be on the inside. And I set that right exactly on the line. I use a seam ripper actually to hold it in place as I sew over it. And then I back it back and forth there. Um, the more sewing, the better, just to, we're trying to keep these things strong. And then go through to the next one here. And now what I'm gonna do is as you can see, I'm going to turn this one. I'm gonna make sure that I'm with that line right here that I created, and I'm gonna be right on top of the other one like that. So if you have lining um, that is going to cover up uh, your casing, uh, you don't have to do a full casing. You can do it on a piece of um, boning and actually mark your marks there. And, and then same thing. And you're just going to sew those onto your boning like you did for the fabric and this is an even easier way to do this then go around and loop those. How I do that is I just use a mark on my uh, presser foot or on my, on my machine and I will these particular ones aren't the greatest because I just did them for sample purposes. <laughs> so I don't really like these loops but you're getting the idea. This is mainly just for showing you how to do these. I had already done my loops and laces before I did the video. <laughs> so anyways, just like that. Okay, I showed you two different ways and like I said, I'm just for the tutorial, I had already made these um, and then I needed to come back and video it. So I just did a quick tutorial over the loops, how to make those, um, how to mark on your casing, um, the spacing for those uh, loops and how to sew them on here. And then how you can also just do it on um, a piece of boning. Now, I don't know about you, but after so many years of sewing on gowns, a lot of brides um, and bridesmaids, especially in ones that weren't strapless, wanted me to remove the boning or I needed to remove it and put in different boning, whatever. Um, I have a whole box of boning. <laughs> and uh, so I will just grab one of my pieces uh, that's about, you know, close to the length, maybe a little bit longer. And then I mark it on there. You don't even have to make the casing like I'm showing you. There's two different ways you can do that. You can sew it directly on the boning and then sew that into uh, your dress just fine. And that works really, really good. Um, the other thing is, do you want boning. A lot of times when I do these casings, I don't even worry about boning in it, but you can add your boning 
to that casing as well. Many ways you can perfect that yourself and try different ways and different techniques. Um, for the casing, either with boning or without, then I do one of two things. Um, through the years, I've done different things. I've sewed it uh, kind of inside out and then turned it uh, to be the right side out. Or because it no longer really shows in a lot of my dresses, um, I will just iron, take it and press it and then turn in my corners or my ends and I will sew it. You can see that one I have just stitched. Actually, I stitched this one twice, right through there twice. The more you can secure these loops from uh, being pulled out, the better. And I do leave the links in there uh, so that they're sewed back and forth on the inside, then they're sewed on the outside. You know, those loops aren't gonna go anywhere. So that's how you do those loops. Um, now let's look how you put them into the gown.
Okay, so after you have inserted uh, the loop casing, uh, your next step would be to create yourself a set of, or a lace to lace it up. Um, and then also you would want to create a modesty panel, possibly. Now, this is where this video is gonna take a different turn. <laughs> Um, I'm going to actually show you a completely different way to lace up a gown. And uh, so stay tuned for that, it's coming. So sometimes the bride has a different vision than you did. <laughs> and let me show you what my vision for when she asked for a lace up um, was. I'll put it right here. And then, her vision uh, was different. She wanted more of her back showing. She wanted a more open back uh, and everything. So with not so many loops, uh, stuff like that. So let me show you a picture, kind of of some pictures she was showing me of what she wanted. So you can see they are two kind of completely different things. And so what I did is I proceeded to go ahead and remove the loop casings that I did. Luckily, it was all enclosed and easily removed. And now I'm going to make new loop casings, um, but just with the boning. And we are going to make it out of the rat tail, which is um, a very thin, uh, fabric or not fabric trim that you can get at the fabric store um, and let me show you the technique I did for that to see how we changed this dress uh, from the one concept of a lace-up to the other concept so you get two two concepts in this one video let's show that so making this lace-up is going to be pretty close to the other one but instead of marking every one inch, you're gonna mark every two inches. And I'm doing this one on boning instead of making a full casing. And I will be laying it out on my boning something like this. The other thing to keep in mind is that rat tail does have a tendency to fray. Uh, really badly to come unraveled. So you need to melt the ends just with a lighter to keep it uh, from doing that. And the sewing these in is pretty close to the same. However, the loops will be much closer together and then spaced farther apart and I keep the rat tail in one continuous loop just to give it more strength inside uh, the dress. you're coming again to the end just remember when you cut it off uh, to go ahead and melt the end again so that it won't come unraveled and stay strong and I also left that pretty long and there you have your beautiful lace up a very happy ending our bride loves the new lace up she just wanted it to be more sparse and um, just a different style and so she loves it so one more successful alteration in the books <laughs> so let me now uh, tell you what we are missing in this video tutorial uh, first of all we are missing the how to make your laces because I never got there so I promise I'm going to make a new video 
step-by-step uh, -step again for lace-ups, including how to turn and make the laces. Um, and then also we didn't get to do uh, the modesty panel uh, because she wasn't needing a modesty panel. So I will then show you in another video down the road a tutorial on how to make a modesty panel. Um, but I will tell you that uh, if you've stayed this long in this video, uh, this was probably the most difficult video I've ever put together. Um, I probably started filming this maybe five, six weeks ago and started the process uh, with her uh, gown and her lace up. Um, she was still waiting on her shoes, so she was gonna come back. And um, in the midst of that, um, we had a tragedy here and my mother passed away um, unexpectedly from an aneurysm. Um, in fact, this week, trying to edit this video, actually the last two weeks, I had to put it aside last week, um, and then trying to edit it this week has been really difficult because a lot of this footage was taken before and I was working on it um, close to the time that my mom passed away. And just the turmoil of that bring me back to the beginning of that. Uh, I don't know why it was so hard. So thank you so much for your patience. Um, this wasn't uh, the best video I could have ever put together. Um, in fact, my perfectionism uh, was telling me just, just dump the footage, erase it, get rid of it, delete it, and move on. And yet I kept looking at this footage saying there's some good quality things here uh, to show people and at least for now they can get a little extra knowledge. And so I thank you uh, so much for um, watching a video that, you know, is just on the loops and, and the casings, which is very important information. So I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please give me a like, um, give me a comment. Um, I will try as fast as I can if you're needing the tutorial on these other things um, to put something together. Just tell me in the comments. I really need that information and I will do it as fast as I can. Thank you for your patience with me as um, I didn't get as many videos out. I just got backlogged with my brides um, at the same time I was trying to mourn my mom's loss. Um, and But it teaches us that life happens and um, then life has to go on. You still have to take care of your brides. You still have to take care of people. And um, so if anything, it's taught me just to be uh, persistent and go ahead and hit play and put the video, edit the video the best I can and get it out there um, just so that you guys have a little bit more information. So thank you so much again and again for following my channel. Thank you for hanging out with me on this journey. Um, thank you all to the wonderful seamstresses that add their special advice um, in the comment section. I think sometimes the comment section is the best um, because we have some amazing seamstresses out there. So I hope you all have a wonderful week. Um, I hope you are surviving uh, prom and bridal season. Prom season is almost over. You can do it. <laughs> and I hope some of these uh, tips helped you. Um, until our next video, I love you all and happy sewing. Have a great week, everyone.